and the Department of the Interior uh, gave a grant to my professor to investigate what sort of impact the collection of all those fishes and their exportation was having on the natural populations. And um, basically found that there was very heavy mortality in the handling of the fishes, um, but that the impacts were pretty much localized. So it, it wasn't like, ever going to drive a species to extinction. It might reduce the population of some fish right around the area where the tropical fish collectors lived. But in general, it wasn't a, a major threat to uh, the population in total. So that's how I ended up going to Guyana the first time. And so besides the ornamental fishes that we were studying, we also made collections just general collections of the fishes in the places that we visited just to see what was there. And so I guess that's when I started trying to identify them and uh, come up with a, a, a complete list for the country. We started with the literature and each of these different um, authors then could come up with a list of the fishes that were mentioned in the literature. Uh, but after that first uh, attempt, and we also then started checking museum collections. I personally would visit the different museums, not only the one in, in Georgetown at, the, at UG, but also the museums in the United States that have major holdings of fishes of Guyana. Yeah, and just to add to um, Professor Tophorn's um, comments earlier, we've also been on field collecting expeditions um, over the past few decades, collecting uh, actual fish samples from various rivers that we could have had access to, to add to these museum collections. So we've also been physically there and physically involved in uh, field expeditions across Guyana. There's all kinds of benefits um, to the average citizen who's only concerned about what what fish he wants to eat for supper. It probably isn't that uh, big of a deal because he doesn't really care what we call them, right? He just wants to know if they're tasty and they won't make him sick. <laughs> but uh, for scientists, it's important. For one thing, um, it's used to inform governmental decisions about where the biodiversity hotspots are in Guyana and which areas need to be protected. I can tell you that the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, the IUCN, has already started using this list, okay? Yeah. And, and they in fact had recently, uh, they, they do contract work to evaluate their species. Uh, to decide on the, the conservation status of each one of those species. Yeah. And they had thought that they were finished with Guyana, but based on our list, they've now issued uh, additional contracts to include the species that we list that they didn't have in their list. So they've accepted it as uh, bona fide. 